My name is Nick, and this is the very first episode of The Self-Care Mission, a new podcast exploring all the myriad ways in which we can take better care of ourselves. Now, for context, it's the middle of September in the year 2020. So we have a global pandemic, we have political strife, we have division on all sides, we have uh, my home state of Oregon burning, smoke in the air, you can't go outside right now, it's, it's, it's rough out here, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, so I think this time has sort of asked a lot of us to hone in on the ways in which we take care of ourselves, and for my part, this project came mostly out of my massage therapy career. I'm a massage therapist licensed in the state of Oregon. And I was producing a podcast for my practice called the Massage Hodge Podcast. My practice is called Massage Hodge Podge. And I was talking to a lot of other massage therapists. I was talking to body workers. And I got a little burned out on that. I, I, I wanted to talk to more just regular, not regular people, just, just wanted to talk more broadly about the ways in which we show up for ourselves. The self-care mission is all about showing up for myself so that I can show up better for you, so that we can all show up better for the world. It's about taking care of, <laughs> it's about taking better care of ourselves so that we can take better care of the world. It's the it's the cliche analogy where on the airplane they tell you to assist yourself first before with your, if the gas mask comes down, situate yourself first before helping others, which maybe that, that analogy is overused, but it does make sense. So if you can't show up for your own health and wellness, you're, you're going to be less equipped to help the, the other people in your life. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show up for myself, create some sort of accountability, and then just explore all the, the granular topics about how we can show up for ourselves. I, I like the idea of looking at different frameworks. And when you, if you go down a rabbit hole of like how to think about self care, you come up with so many different ideas. So, there's all these different like sort of buzzfeedy listicle articles about the the two pillars of self-care, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven. The, so it doesn't seem like there's a lot of consensus even about how to think about this. When I was looking up frameworks of self-care, I, I found things suggesting that any one of these things would be considered a pillar of self-care. Body, mind, sexuality, nutrition, Relationship, heart, spirit, physical, social, practical, personal, financial, space, work, intellectual, relational, safety and security. So there's there's all these different ideas, and I really want to hone in on the ones that I think are really helpful. Some of them are get they get a little too complicated. There's too many pillars to keep track of, or they or they're too they're too simple. There's just like it's too broad. You don't know where your day to day sort of fits into these things. So hopefully by exploring those, we can can get a little bit more clarity on how to show up and and what to do about that. So a big issue for myself, and I I gather for a lot of people is is consistency. So even right now. <laughs> As I record this, I'm not using my own toolkit. And my toolkit has great things in it, things that I know make me feel better. But I'm not showing up for basically all of them. The one thing I'm sh I've been showing up for is I committed to rowing. I have a rowing machine to rowing uh, 2000 meters a day, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> if you if you know about rowing, uh, and trying to get my time down to seven minutes. That, that is actually quite hard. Uh, but, so I've been showing up. I rode 2,000 meters a day, and that's the, 
That's sort of the only thing I've been really showing up for. I'm not eating that well. I'm staying up way too late and still getting up pretty early. I'm not checking with friends. I, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. So when I talk about my toolkit, some of the things I have are uh, tracking what I eat. That really works for me. I like to to know the numbers. That's something I, I believe in. I don't think it's for everybody, but I, I like to just keep track of what I'm consuming. And it keeps me more conscious and aware of the bad stuff. Anyway, um, I like to always be reading something. That's a good toolkit. I've been okay with that lately, but always be reading. That's that's something I, I believe in. I like a, a mindfulness practice. This fell off ages ago. I, I've been using the Sam Harris Waking Up app for my mindfulness practice, and I really need to fire that back up. Uh, phoning a friend. Now, my my best friend in New York, he's good at phoning me. I'm not the best at phoning him. So, it's like, but that to me is like having someone or a group of people at the t- at the top of your list just to call when anything comes up. Just to just a sounding board. Sometimes it just helps to say something out loud to other people. Music is really big for me in my toolkit. Singing loudly, uh, maybe badly. <laughs> Um, for me, it's making music and uh, l- like re- zoning out and listening to music. Like music plays a really big role in my life. And uh, movement, that's, that's the rowing. That's the one thing I've been showing up for. As a massage therapist, I really believe in uh, mobility training. So showing up for foam rolling, stretching, and doing that soft tissue work that can really make a difference in your health and wellness, which I, again, I mean, I, this is the, this is so bad because this is me advising clients on this table, as a matter of fact, to take their mobility and self-care more seriously. And I, yeah, it's just another one of those examples of not being consistent with myself. And then another thing that I wrote down, there's probably more in this toolkit. And maybe my own toolkit is too overwhelming. I clearly, I, I sort of have been ignoring it. So, uh, but breath work, I really do believe in the value of breath work. And I want to explore more of that. I think there's a whole, like, I mean, there's books written about the, the different tools and, and tactics and exercises you can do to improve your breathing. And I think really diving into that would be beneficial in a lot of ways. So this podcast is going to bring on, so I can talk about uh, at a certain level about body work, massage therapy, mobility, but I'm going way outside myself. I'm going to be interviewing just anyone I can, can contact and and talk with about uh, nutrition and fitness and skincare and, I mean, hair care. <laughs> Maybe that applies. Less scalp care for me in my case. There's just a lot of uh, blind spots. There's uh, things I just don't even consider for showing up for myself. And I'd like to examine some of those and bring those to you. And, and maybe I'll be getting like self-care tools and exploring those and seeing which ones work and which ones work better than others. And it'll be like foam rollers and massage guns and just all those products that seem to keep popping up and examining whether we really need to be spending money on all these different single use tools for our self-care. And some of them probably are good, but some of them are probably overkill. So I really want to take a look at that. So showing up consistently and why don't we do it? The stresses of life, anxiety, emotions, a lot of things get in the way. So yeah, all of that, all of that. Uh, As for me, I'm sure more of my story will come out over time, but these are things that sort of swirl around for me. 
I am the youngest of seven kids. I was raised in uh, Northeast Ohio near Cleveland and Akron. And growing up the youngest of seven, I think I was spoiled in a lot of ways. I guess I'm still sort of uncovering how that impacts me now, but I'm sure I'm sure it's there. I was raised uh, Catholic, though I don't pr- practice now. I was even an altar boy. I, w- I went to Catholic grade school for seven years. Set well, s- grade school and middle school. So, yeah, I was in that school for a long time. And I was a, a heavier kid growing up, which I was thinking about this the other day. For the Catholic school, we would have to go down to downtown Cleveland and shop at the one store that carried the uniforms. And it was just like, I was, uh, I didn't ever get to wear the normal clothes. I always had to wear husky. And what a terrible word that is. Oh man, it was so, like, I still feel like the impact of that word on my, like, makes me uncomfortable just to think about that time. So, yeah, I grew up with, I don't think a lot of guys talk about it so much, but I, I grew up with kind of a lot of body image issues, and I I think I still deal with quite a bit of that now. So that's something I do want to, I want to uncover and, and get into about that. So let's see, I went to uh, college. I strangely double majored in Spanish and theater. I, I do, I, my Spanish has, has dried up as it were. I, I could probably get by in a Spanish speaking country, but I don't practice that so much. And theater, I, I, was sort of I acted throughout college, but I sort of leaned more into playwriting, and I dabbled a little bit of that, and I had very, very, very minor successes with that. But at the same time, I never took it as seriously as I needed to. So I'm, I'm pretty honest with myself about that. I don't, I don't think like, oh, I missed my shot, or no one ever gave me the credit I deserved on my thing. No, it's like I didn't show up and write consistently. So like. I, yeah, I still think about the theater a lot. I love live theater, and I really, I hope that I can cultivate a writing practice again at some point in my life and and take another stab at that. I, I think there's a lot of value in in the theater, so there's that. And, this, I mean, professionally, the, that, the college experience didn't lead to too much, so I ended up waiting tables for a long time, and I... I married a uh, college sweetheart at the time, and we sort of just rode that relationship escalator to the top and found that we didn't really need to be married. It wasn't really, didn't sort of evolved into sort of a friendship. And then, so we ended that pretty friendly. And later I met uh, another young lady while I was waiting tables, and we ended up getting married and having two kids. But then I lost the thread of that relationship too. So I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not super great at being married. However, I will say both divorces were very amicable and I seem to be good at that part. So I don't, I don't know what to make of that, but I'm still trying to navigate my way through uh, love and relationships and romance. Uh, but the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's a lot. So, but I do have two wonderful kids and there are two little two little boys and uh they're just amazing to me but even with them I struggle with presence I struggle with all the other things swirling around me oh I guess I skipped the part where I I I went back to school and got a massage therapy license and and then became a massage therapist but then I was a stay-at-home dad for a while and and doing other marketing type work and then the kids got older, and I w- decided to get back into massage therapy. So here, so here I am. This is my massage therapy table. If you're watching the video, it's where I record. And yeah, the divorce, which was December 2019, somewhat accelerated my getting back into this world and starting a private practice. Of course, uh, Massage Hodgepodge, my private practice in Portland, Oregon, opened in. January of 2020, which was very exciting at the time, but, you know, none of us really saw what was coming. So it's been a bit 
of a year. Yeah, yeah. So now, present day, I'm a co-parent. The kids uh, shuffle back and forth between uh, their mom and my place. And it's great. They, they've been very adaptable. They see, they're they actually kind of excited. They think it's kind of fun to have two houses. I, I, you know, I'm not sure how much of this will of this time will come out for them later. I, you know, it's interesting, but anyway, all of that to say, I, I struggle with presence, running this private practice, worrying about getting clients on the table, um, starting this new project, scheduling interviews and wanting this to, to have an impact. And, and then the boys are here and I find myself pulled in all these different ways. I, yeah. So Presence. I think the the mindfulness part of my toolkit, which I've been ignoring, will help me be more present with them while they're here. So there's that. What else can I say about this new podcast? Yeah, we're going to explore uh, body work, mental health, skincare, mindfulness, relationships. We're going to talk about different frameworks. I've already recorded an interview about uh, nutrition and wellness with Kelly Kincaid, uh, an amazing person here in Portland. I have an interview with Andrea Lapomi down in Las Vegas. She's a fellow massage therapist, but she also specializes in uh, nails and feet. We talk all about feet and how to properly take care of your feet, (laughs) which I don't do. So that was enlightening. Uh, I'm happy to share that. And I talked to a local dermatologist telling me that my skincare routine is trash. Actually, he didn't say that. <laughs> That's my words. I don't, I, like, it was so, it's embarrassing. I don't, I don't have a skincare routine. It's, uh, yeah. So I'm going to change that. So like talking to these people and learning about it. And I'm uh, interviewing this local uh, th- a therapist who came up with this amazing framework for a way to think about self-care. I'm excited to dive into that. I have some uh, chiropractor friends coming on the show, and I'm sure there'll be a steady stream of uh, fellow massage therapists. I find that massage therapists in particular are very thoughtful about self-care because we talk to so many people about not just physically showing up for ourselves, so that that's obviously a big part of it, but also just like the the small moments and the routine of it, and we just because of what we do, we talk a lot about showing up for yourself. So I hope this podcast will be for anyone who has struggled to be consistent and who needs inspiration and ideas and community and support. Just a place to go to to get new things to think about, new things to try. I think it's really valuable to have your own toolkit, to be thoughtful about what are the things in the toolkit and what are the ways in which you show up for yourself on a consistent basis. And that should always be evolving. You should always be looking at that toolkit and it should even be written down like, Am I like I'm looking at mine right now, and it's just like it was only until I wrote it all down that I was like, oh, these are the things that I consider important to me in the ways, the ways I need to show up for myself and to feel good. And after I wrote them down, I was like, oh, no wonder I don't feel good. (laughs) Not not doing, not doing any of this. That's that. I do sing loudly and badly, often in the car. That's a, I'm pretty good at that one. But yeah, the mindfulness piece has fallen off. Just the past week and a half or so, my nutrition just t- t- dove off the cliff. And I'm, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back. So I really want this mission, the self-care mission, to be practical and actionable. And I hope that you find it helpful too. So this podcast is uh, intended to be spread far and wide. I, I, it should be on Apple Podcasts. It should be on Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. And I certainly hope that you will accept the mission with me. You can go to 
theselfcaremission.com and there'll be all the socials if you're listening to this. Please follow me on Instagram. I'll be sharing full episodes there and other ideas and little reviews and tips and maybe inspirational things. And yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I really want, I want this to be real and I want to, I want to show up for this and be authentic with you, the listener, so that you feel comfortable to show up with me and be authentic and to share the things that really work for you and to share the things that have been really hard for you. And I'll be here doing the same. All right. That's episode one of the self-care mission. This should be coming out every week. Please subscribe and join me in this new adventure.